4 billion years ago, asteroids rained down on the newly formed moon, tearing into the surface. Where the fractured crust is thinnest, molten lava seeps from the moon's hot interior, spreads out in giant pools, and solidifies to form the scars we see today from Earth. And strangely, although the moon rotates, the Earth's gravity holds onto it so tightly, the same face points towards us at all times, making the features on the far side of the moon a complete mystery. For all of history, the far side of the moon was invisible to the Earth. It's the back side, you can't see it. In 1959, Soviet spacecraft Luna 3 flies past the moon's far side and photographs it for the first time. Astronomers expect to see the familiar dark and light patches. They were in for a big surprise. When scientists saw the pictures, they were shocked. The far side looked completely different than the near side. It's saturated with craters. It just was such a huge dichotomy. Nobody was expecting that at all. The far side still had massive impact craters, but it was uniformly pale. It seemed like no dark lava had bled out onto the surface at all. But why? The only solution we could come up with is there's a difference in thickness between the crust of the near side and the crust of the far side. The backside must be so thick that lavas are not able to come up through them and erupt out onto the surface. Instead, on the front side, where it's very thin, lavas can easily come up through cracks and flow out onto the surface. Recent NASA missions confirm the crust on the back of the moon is around 30 miles thicker than the crust on the front. The far side is thicker. It's not like, oh, part of it is and part of it isn't. No, it's really the other side of the moon has a thicker crust than the near side. That's bizarre. So one of the biggest mysteries in planetary science over the last about 50 years is, you know, why is the crust of the far side so thick? The impact theory doesn't really cover that. It just forms the moon, but it doesn't say why one side should be so different than the other one, unless something strange happened. The new age of supercomputers brings about the first credible explanation. The impact of Thea could have made two moons, not one. And this double birth might also explain our double-sided moon. According to the theory, 4.5 billion years ago, there are two moons in the night sky. The smaller moon chases its larger sibling, gradually getting closer. Eventually, the two moons mush together in slow motion, and the smaller moon covers the far side of the larger moon, creating a new, much thicker crust. Not all impacts are high-speed, super-violent events that eject material everywhere. Instead of just wham, smacking into it, it would have just merged with it, just been pulled apart and smeared out over the moon. Essentially, when you look at one half of the moon, you see more of one body. And when you look at the other side of the moon, you see more of the other body. They kind of wrapped around the first body, and so it's thicker on that side.